Welcome back everybody to the channel. Today we have the 2024 Hyundai Ionic 5 and I'm going to show you everything there is to know in case you're in the market and then of course I'm going to take it on a POV drive. So let's get started. So let's start off first up front for the Ionic 5. We have these really nice pixelated daytime running LEDs. They're kind of flashing on the camera right now but in person they are definitely solid and we don't have any front parking sensors because this is the preferred version with the rear wheel drive so we don't have any parking sensors no front facing camera but it's okay because the blue looks fantastic you can see there on the bottom as well we have some like opening and closing grills but right now it's closed definitely because it wants to keep its battery warm because it is freezing here in Quebec it's got a very long and big front end you can see kind of how wide the wheelbase is here too in the front and we do have a front trunk but it is not much to write home about because you can maybe keep a few things in there. Maybe it's like a secret storage for you. Uh, but besides that, you're not going to be using it too much. And it's kind of a hassle to get to at times. All right. So let's talk about battery and performance quickly. We have a 168 kilowatt electric motor. And then we also get a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. That's good for 488 kilometers. So rear wheel drive does get a little bit more kilometers than all wheel drive, which is nice. So all that combined is going to give us 225 horsepower, 200. 58 pound feet of torque which isn't too bad now charging times your level 2 charger which is like at your home you know 50 kilowatt output not too bad it's gonna get you there in six hours so you go to bed you wake up you're good you've got a full charge now level 3 with a 350 kilowatt output is gonna get you there from 0 to 80 percent in only 17 minutes which is incredible if you can find a charger because I have not been able to find a 350 kilowatt hour charger or kilowatt output charger anywhere in Quebec so far, or at least not anywhere in Quebec, but at least in my area of Quebec, couldn't find it anywhere. So let's swing around to the side profile of the Ionic 5. And just like the 6, I love absolutely every angle of this car. It is so nice, so well designed. The body lines are there. It's like, it looks like an SUV from the side. You got nice big tires with those aero looking wheels. And then if we take a closer look, we also get these door handles that come in and out, which I like a lot. I don't know how that's gonna be in the winter, if it's gonna be able to break through ice, I don't know, because it's not that cold yet to get ice. You also have a sensor here that can one touch lock and unlock. They fold in as you're driving to reduce drag. It's all on purpose and it's all super nice. And I love the color here. The blue color is actually fantastic. It's surprised me and it's grown on me over the week. I really like it a lot. One more thing over on the side profile, we also get a little charge port where you can have your DC fast charging if you pull this out or just your normal outlets there which is completely fine and nice and then you can also get like these pixels that'll show you you know how much the car's charged and it of course closes automatically again not sure if that's going to hold up in the winter because i haven't tested it so now we come on to the back and again it is just as nice to look at as the rest of the car you got those nice pixelated lights there i know they're flashing in the camera but in real life they are, do not flash like this but it's very nice the fact that you have like these little squares everywhere kind of continues here you can kind of see them they're not illuminated but you can see them where you have this nice Ionic 5 badge. All the colors match really well. I like it. We have some rear parking sensors as well as a backup camera back here. So it's all fantastic. And you can see we have like kind of a rear spoiler there where air will kind of pass through up here, which is very nice. And you have the nice Ionic logo. Let's actually open the trunk. It's not an automatic tailgate because this is the preferred version, but it's no problem. We have a little bit of storage here under the carpet. You kind of got to yank this guy and pull it up. And then you can see we got storage under there. and just a whole bunch of space because it is kind of like a hatchbacking is kind of thing so you have a whole bunch of space this way and that's great because you can slide stuff in fold the seats down and have so much more room and with that being said let's take a look at the interiors all right so as usual up first for the ionic 5 let's take a look at the rear so not a lot of big things going on there's like no coloring at all for the door so that's fine we'll move on right away but we do get these cloth seats because this is the preferred version so you don't you're not going to get anything leather but it's not necessarily a bad thing i like the way they split it up with the black and the gray looks very nice let's actually sit inside show you how much room i have here okay so inside right away you can see we have a vent so that you can get the heater there's no heated seats back here for this version so that's you know not bad at least we have a vent here to keep ourselves warm which is very good i'm glad they added that then we have two usb ports back here this little guy here it's going to pull down for us which is very nice uh, the visibility out here is pretty good the headroom is really good and the leg room is even better i have lots of room side to side here so no problems there either i'm and i'm very comfortable i can definitely do a road trip back here no problem it's comfortable, it's roomy, it's spacious, exactly what you would expect from an EV SUV like this one. And yeah, it's it's comfortable. So let's take a look up front. All right, next up, we're going to take a look at the front seat for 
the Ionic 5. Again, same thing with the door, not a lot of crazy paneling here, but it's all right because you sit in, you're greeted by this wonderful steering wheel. So on the steering wheel, like when I drove the Ionic 6 and stuff, you would have noticed that we had little scroll wheels for the controls here, but this year we just have like these little buttons, which is fine because I think they're going for cost saving here with the preferred version, and I like that. I don't like though that we took away the LEDs. I prefer to see them on all the trim. I think that should be standard. Adds a little personality. Would love to see it come back. Um, and then also we have this drive mode button. It's very quick when I switch. I'll show you a little bit more about the drive modes when we actually take it on a road. Then we have some illumination controls, the brake hold, traction tool, standard stuff on the left-hand side, all good. And then we have this really nice infotainment screen. You know, I would like to see this like black or a little bit less of borders here because you, do, you do notice it when you're looking at it, but when you're driving and using it every day, you don't notice it at all. It's just clean. It kind of, it flows seamlessly. Your eye kind of takes out this part here. You really do see it on camera, but in person, you really don't see it that much. And I like that. We also have a built-in navigation, which is good because we have the preferred version. So that's nice. We have some climate controls here. It's a little bit of digital. We have like a quick button that you just saw me press. Uh, I have the driver only mode on, but I have heated seats, heated steering, which is very nice to have. So, you know, not too much to complain there. I like it. It's enough for what you get, for what you're paying for. I wouldn't expect too much more. So that's great. We have some quick buttons down here for the media stuff. And, you know, if you've seen it before, Ionic 6, EV6, it's all the same stuff when it comes to the infotainment systems. And if you've seen this infotainment on the Ionic 6, EV6, whatever, um, you know, it's really the same operating system. It, it operates the same way. looks nice, very responsive. We have wire wired carplay wired android auto which is nice i like this little lip too it's just it's it's just a clean design overall we have a good mix of like touch and physical buttons and we have a quick button for the rear view camera because i have the preferred version no ultimate package it means i get some parking sensors for the rear uh but nowhere else and then no 360 degree but that's fine because that's kind of okay for what you need then we have a usb port down here two usb ports right here a cup holder right there the only thing that's like weird about the iona 5 design is the fact that you know i have all this space here there's so much room here in between and i could probably put something it just scares me that something like gets in my feet but i mean i'm not really that careless with my stuff so i'm okay but you know it's just a little bit weird i i like the onyx is separation a little bit more it, it you know it satisfied me just a little bit more i like the seats the, i like the nice little like you know, they kept the, the cube, the, the pixelated icon kind of thing that they had going on in the exterior. Nice interior. It's it's really not a boring interior. It's clean, it's simple, but it's also usable. And I feel like some other companies have forgotten about that, but, but Hyundai is definitely on the trail here with, yep, we're going to give you some touch buttons, but we're also going to give you some physical buttons so you get the best of both worlds. And, you know, it's, it's cost effective and it's a nice EV to sit in. So with that being said, let's see how this thing drives on the roads here in Quebec. Let's take it for a POV drive. Okay, so here we are driving the 2024 Hyundai Ionic 5 rear wheel drive preferred. Yes, that is a mouthful again, but you know, I kind of like the fact that this time around I have the preferred version, random dog. Hello, doggy. Um, I kind of like the fact that I have the preferred version of the Ionic 5 because usually you get the all, you know, the fully equipped thing. You don't really get to see what I think a lot of people might actually buy. Not a lot of people are going to equip the all-wheel drive. Not a lot of people are going to equip the ultimate package specifically. So the fact that I'm getting this to see and show you is a really huge plus, I think. And honestly, I've driven the ultimate package of the Ionic 5 way before I started doing videos. And yeah, okay, it's nicer, the materials are a little bit better, but the ride doesn't change, and also the drive doesn't change, and the range doesn't, actually the range is worse, because all-wheel drive, you're actually gonna lose range with game performance, and the performance that you gain isn't that much, right? Like, obviously, I think I prefer the Ionic 6 just for personality-wise, but for space-wise, the Ionic 5 is where it is at. It is so spacious in here. I, I feel like I'm like kind of by myself as the driver, the passenger has their own seating place, you know, and the climate controls are really good. You have your heated seating, heated steering, which is really nice. And again, you're not paying a lot of money for that. You don't even need to equip the ultimate package and you get a whole bunch of cool stuff and a whole bunch of good stuff. So I have like 66% battery, but I will try to show you some of the performance here. I do have iPedal on. So I'm gonna like let my foot off the gas, car breaks by itself, puts pa power back into the battery like usual. And let's go, boom, oh. Yeah, so this one, you know, it definitely doesn't continue to give to give power like, you know, the all-wheel drive ones do. 
it, it kind of tops out, you know, after like 30, 40 kilometers of, of a boost, but it does give you that nice little kick and it's still got EV power. You know, I, one of my favorite things to do with any EV, you know, no matter what, is to line up side the most radical car I can find on the street. And, you know, he's super loud, he's manual, you know, he's whatever, he's lowered, he's slammed, and then just absolutely gap him <laughs> because there's nothing that those, a lot of those cars can do, even if even in a rear wheel drive, Hyundai Ionic so it's really fun to do that the steering wheel feels really good and the ride quality is really good I think the ride quality the ride qualities are about the same like maybe the Ionic 5 is a little bit better because you're sitting a little bit higher up you're a little bit more off the ground than the Ionic 6 but really they're really hard to compare the two because they're on the same platform the steering wheel feels the same the pedals feel the same the regen braking feels the same so really it's more spatial and like looks and design that you probably pick the car off of but look um there's like surprisingly not a lot of body roll for such a you know pretty big and heavy suv uh there's not a lot of body roll at all we're really having a good time here and then i also have like cruise control all that stuff is standard too as well as like this lane centering assist thing where it literally will keep my car you know on long road trips in the center of the lane i don't really have to do too much it just kind of keeps you there and you don't really have to do anything but i like to drive so you know i'll take it off but on long road trips perfectly fine the seats are plenty comfortable for long road trips too so that's also good so so far you know i'm about five days into the week and i've been doing 24.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers which isn't too bad right we do have a little bit more range with this ionic 5 because we don't have an all-wheel drive suit and we don't have all these crazy performance so that's good but of course all the ev stuff the ev weird stuff you know if you use climate control for every you know look for every one i go up or down it'll either either give me more or less if it gets colder or warmer it'll give me more or less range and of course it depends on your drive mode so if i go into normal now i'll get 280 sport 271 and eco 288 so normal and eco are really not much of a difference but sport it's quite a dip i like the eye pedal system in here or the regenerative braking yeah you can see i have the paddle shifters on my hands here where i could lower it and then you know the car would regen less so brake less when you let off the gas or the your accelerator or break more or completely come to a stop. I like the one pedal driving. I use it all the time. Every single EV I get, I use it. And Ionic or Hyundai's anyways, has one of the best. Like it's it's very predictable. It's very easy to get used to, very easy to adjust to. And you know, it's just, look, like I'm, I'm not touching my brake at all and I'm coming to a stop. My brake lights behind me are in fact on and I come to a full stop at this stop sign. And without even touching the brake, I can go again. It is such a great system, that one pedal drive, and it kind of allows you to put a little bit of range back into your battery pack, which of course is a good thing. And then when you go down hills too, you can kind of slack off the gas. You probably see it here. In this gauge here on my right, it'll show me how much power I'm giving and also how much I'm recharging. So I'm immediately starting to go down the hill. I can let off the gas just a little bit. I'm still going 58 kilometers an hour but i'm putting power back into my battery i can see that there's a little charge going into it so also when you do press the brake normally that charge will come back i think the i think what the regen braking does though is it actually saves your brakes because i'm not really using the brakes i'm using the electric motor to brake and slow down so that's the difference and that's a huge plus for the ev the fact that you don't have to visit you know the shop after you know five years because your brakes are done unless you really don't like the one pedal driving then you know it's probably going to be the same but you don't really have to worry about it if you use the one pedal driving since you're not using the brakes as much as you normally would the roads are actually really dry right now but i did get to experience the ionic 5 in some like snowish kind of weather like it's very dry right now so obviously it's you know no problem i have winter tires on because it's mandatory here in quebec but it was completely fine rear wheel drive got through like the sludge and a little bit of the ice and like the dirty rain and all that stuff got through that with absolutely no problem and I have a rear wheel drive. Obviously all wheel drive, I would recommend it just for like, if you live in Quebec specifically, it's way better, but you don't need it. If you don't live in a place with like really harsh weathers, you could really get away with using this as your grocery getter, all that stuff. Uh, and it's really like the, the incentives in Quebec are really good for this car. It really makes it attractive, the price point, you know, and the, the thing is though, that, you know, the worst thing about it is you still can't get one. I mean, that, that's really the worst thing about it. You still can't get one. They got this gap in the middle that I didn't like, but other than that, like everything has just been really good to use it's so easy to use like that's the thing that i love the most about it is i don't have to worry about anything you, you just you plug it in if you have a charger at home you're going to be okay you plug it in 
you go to bed, you wake up, you probably have a good amount of kilometers. And if you don't, then you plug it in the wall and it'll keep your battery pretty much stable even during the winter. I've no, you know, I've had some minus, we've been in like the minus five range and I've been driving and I haven't really seen a range drop off, which is really, really important. So really it's been decent. Obviously as it gets colder, you're definitely going to see that, that range drop off. But as of right now, like, you know, early winter, we're fine and that's good news. So yeah, like the Ionic 5 is such a solid choice for an EV SUV, got plenty of space, plenty of room. You know, obviously we're missing some of the nice fancy stuff that the ultimate package comes from, but you do not need it. I don't feel like I'm compromising, you know, what could be if I don't get it. I think this is a perfect daily driver car. It's gonna save you money on gas. You're not gonna have to visit the gas station, no oil change, no nothing. And it's big, really well designed. It's it's like future-proofed. I think that, again, still some of the other companies have some catching up to do. So I still think Hyundai with its design game is really, really ahead of everybody. So, you know, everybody else has to catch up. Hyundai's is where it's at. And I can't wait to see what that Ionic 5N looks like. It looks absolutely ridiculous, absolutely nuts. And I hope, I hope Hyundai gives me the chance to get my hands on it for you guys because, oh my God, what a treat that would be. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Make sure you leave a like, make sure you, you subscribe. I'm so, so close to, to 1,000 subscribers. That's such a huge goal of mine and I'm really trying to hit it. I, I don't really care if I don't hit it by the end of the year, but I'd like to hit it by like early next year if I could. And then, you know, I can start making money and I can put all that money back into the videos and bring you guys more cars you know, and have more time to do it. That money that I would get from you guys subscribing and giving me, you know, the ad money would allow time, would give me more time in these cars, with these cars and with multiple cars so you can get even more cars out of me. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe, like, and also watch another video on the channel if you want to see what it's like to live in a whole week with the Ionic 5, then that should be out on the channel shortly after the review. So check that out as well. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next week. See you in the next car. Take care.